everybody, Ben Woodruff here uh, with a video today that's a little out of character for my channel. Today I'm actually doing a video sharing about an experience of a UFO investigating another UFO. I'm sharing this because it's kind of fun to do so, but more so I'm hoping that other people may be able to give some answers of what the second UFO was in this experience. Now before uh, we jump into this, I gotta say the term UFO just means unidentified flying object, which does not equal aliens. It just means something in the sky, you have no idea what it is, could be anything. Okay, and you're trying to figure out what it is. Nowadays, of course, the term UAP is being used more commonly, which is unidentified aerial phenomenon, doesn't carry as much of the stigma. Uh, because if you say UFO, then a lot of times people are like, you're, you're kooky, you're crazy. Um, I uh, think it's really an interesting time in the history of the world, especially in the United States right now, where we have, um, you know, reports and videos coming out from the US military and even being delivered to Congress in the most recent uh, UAP report that was delivered. So interesting times, interesting topic. Now, uh, as for me myself, I spent a lot of time looking up at the sky. First of all, I'm a falconer and a professional wildlife trainer. I train falcons, hawks, owls, eagles, parrots, hornbills, you name it. So I'm spending a lot of time out flying these birds, whether as a falconer or as a wildlife educator. I also am an astrophotographer, which means I'm spending a lot of nights outside looking at the skies, chasing the Milky Way, photographing comets and satellites and the space station. So I'm used to looking up at the skies, thinking in three dimension and triangulating and figuring where things are at. Now, over the years, I've seen a lot of weird things and I just say that's where they are. I'm like, hmm, that, that's that's a head scratcher. Don't know what that was. Very strange, but it's just an odd story. The thing is most people, when they have some sort of a UFO experience, it's unexpected, it's brief, and it's emotionally charged. You're like, what is that? And then it's gone. That's what happens to most people. And then of course you have to worry about the fact that your brain, because you had a heightened state of emotion, is trying to repiece it together what you actually saw. You usually don't have the chance to photograph. This experience is very different because I had all the time in the world and had fabulous equipment. With me when this happened, I had my spotting scope and I had my telephoto lens and a tripod and again, being a wildlife educator, I was showing up to work when this happened. So <clears throat> this was on June 23rd, 2019. I pulled up to work, it's the middle of the day, and a friend on Facebook had posted, hey, there's been this object in the sky for a half an hour. Does anybody know what it is? And I'm like, I see that on my phone, huh? I look up, I'm like, oh, yeah, there is a thing there. To everybody, it was just a, uh, a white glowing orb in the day that was not moving at all. But there were some wispy clouds under it, and so it was hard to tell what exactly is this thing, is it moving or not? So I grabbed my camera, grabbed my, my uh, uh, telephoto lens, grabbed my spotting scope and my tripod, and I, and I went into work, and I set up my scope on the tripod through a window to follow it. And I kept going outside and looking at it, but that way I made sure with the help of a tripod, your eyes aren't playing tricks. Guaranteed this thing was not moving for hours. So I started snapping photos and uh, I tried my best. And over time I could see that there were these lines around it uh, that almost reminded me a little bit of the, uh, of the spacecraft on the movie Flight of the Navigator. Uh, the 1980s movie, there's a classic Disney show. And I was like, okay, this is really strange. So I start looking up online and I started to deduce what this first UFO was. Uh, it looked like a, a DARPA balloon. Now DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, which is basically the cool, crazy, scary science arm of the US military where they're always innovating new things. <clears throat> they have these balloons. The program is called ALTA, which is the Adaptable Lighter Than Air program, which the idea is this, to make a balloon that can go up or down, but that never uh, has any propulsion system of its own, but has built in a special sensor that can detect stratospheric movement. So it goes up to like 70, 75,000 feet, well above where normal airliners travel, um, getting closer towards space there. And it just sits there motionless and then it'll detect, I wanna go that way, okay. Um, there's wind going this way, wind going this way, wind going this way, okay, I wanna go that way. I will drop down to that elevation and then let the wind carry me and then whoo, pop out of the wind. And so it's, it's an experiment they're working on. I started researching this a little, was looking at images online of the balloon. I'm like, okay, 
pretty sure that's what it is, okay? And uh, then later on, <clears throat> I'll get to the second UFO in a second. That's the weird part. But then later on, the sun set, and the thing was still glowing, still glowing, still glowing. And about an hour after the sun had set, then it turned orange, pink, and then disappeared. Which that says, you know, with the Earth, you know, if you're way high above the horizon line, even though for me on the ground having the sun set, uh, you're still getting rays of sun hitting this balloon. So in other words, it wasn't producing its own light. It was just reflecting sunlight. So basically it was a DARPA balloon. But here's the strange thing that happened. Uh, halfway in the middle of all this, yeah, so here's this balloon thing up there, and all of a sudden, this blue and gold object, this cylinder, comes up to it. And we didn't see it coming, but, you know, I don't know how what the distances are, but, you know, 500 yards from it, all of a sudden, it comes up, and it stops. And then it goes, and it turns around like this, and stops for about 5 or 10 minutes, and then it goes like this, stops, and then it moves maybe 75 feet away, sits there for another half hour, and then just shot out of nowhere. Uh, it didn't, well, I don't know how it came in originally. We watched it at the tail end of it coming in, but when it did this strange maneuver and it waited a ways away, just watching, and then pew, it just, there was no sound, there was no anything that looked like any form of propulsion, but it just, a bajillion miles an hour, pew, disappeared. We did, it didn't, blank out we did see it move incredibly fast out of eyesight but it was just faster than i can comprehend i don't know what this second object is i'm open to the fact that it is probably something to do with the darpa project but i've researched everywhere i can and can find absolutely nothing to suggest what this strange sort of cylindrical object was um it seemed pretty large it was smaller than the balloon but whatever it was, it was able to come in, maneuver in ways that are not normal for an aircraft or a balloon, and then able to disappear at speeds that seem impossible. So I wanted to share that on here. I hope you find it interesting. Uh, if you have any clue what this second object might be, um, is it something that DARPA uses to check on these balloons? Is it some sort of other ship or craft or plane or something that I've never heard of? If you have any idea what it is, please let me know down in the comments below. And as always, keep your eyes on the skies.